here with Harish and Sean. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you for having us. Absolutely, our pleasure. And uh, they're going to tell us a little bit about building Gen AI apps with Google databases and cloud runtimes. But before we do that, can you give us a brief introduction of yourselves, what you do at Google, and then a brief description of your talk? Yeah, I'm uh, Harish Jayakumar. I lead the Google Cloud Solutions team globally. And our talk is, like I said, uh, building Gen AI applications with Google Cloud databases and cloud runtimes. We got a good audience. We're coming out with a big adrenal rush from that, so it's awesome. Sean? Uh, hey everyone, I'm Sean Ree. Uh, I'm a product manager on the databases engineering team at Google Cloud. I'm super happy to be here next this week uh, to share what we know and also to engage with all of you today. Wonderful, thank you. Okay, so about these Gen AI apps, what are some common use cases uh, for building Gen AI apps based on cloud runtimes and Google databases? Yeah, I mean, there's there's tons of use cases that you know have been called out everywhere. But like from our talk, if I was to pick like the top three we did, one is actually like generating creative new content. So for example, if you're a retailer you have a new product, just the amount of work that was involved in creating the attributes, the product description, where to put it in the product catalog, all that actually took multiple weeks to do, but now you can do this with ours, and that's something you could do with running an application with things like our cloud runtimes, like cloud run, and connecting it back to like a vector database for your specific data, with like AlloyDB or Cloud SQL. Another one is uh, augmented search, which we talked about, which is very different than like our keyword search, which is just one word, you connect, return the web page. Here we actually take the intent of the search, which is like, I'm asking you things like, hey, did you like this website? And you're like, yes, I liked it. Then I'm like, what did you like about it? And when I say, what did you like about it? It's the website. So that kind of an argumentation is, that's another use case again, where the cloud runtimes and the databases come into the thing. And then third, would you like to talk about? Uh, did you, yeah, well, there's a bunch of use cases for Jane AI. Like there's content generation, there's more rich search that Karish just mentioned. Um, and of course, there's the RAG approach that we like to talk about that. We'll go in more detail in the, in the further questions that we have today. But yes, a bunch of use cases. There's the, the limits, just generally the creativity of it. There's no limit, and then we're just happy to be able to be part of that. Yeah, and it sounds like, from what you were saying, right, it takes things that maybe before you did in weeks to days. days. Oh, yeah. Yes, exactly. Making things much quicker, much easier. Yeah. Always a good thing, right? Well, so what are some of the specific advantages from pairing Google databases with CloudWord? It's like, why would I want to do? Yeah, I can take that one. Yeah, sure. um, so while there's many combinations of different services the process can use to build these apps, the the easy and kind of recommendation that we want everyone to start with is using Cloud Run and LODB. And the reason is, it's super simple to get started. Like Cloud Run is serverless. Um, you get all these features out of the box and you don't have to worry about all these different configurations. Uh, AlloyDB is the perfect database to start because it has all the features you need, like vector search. It's really fast in terms of performance. It's open source compatible. And so we pair these together in our talk as kind of, kind of the, the standard template to start from. Uh, but again, you can choose other options too. Like you can switch out Cloud Run with GKE if you need more control and knobs. You can switch out LADB with Cloud SQL if you want more lift and shift compatibility or a, a easier way to start. So um, many options out there, but these two are kind of the reasons we want to get started. So people to get started quickly um, and enjoy the reaps and enjoy the benefits of using LLMs and Gen AI apps in general. Wonderful, yeah, that makes total sense. So you had mentioned RAG before, right? RAG, RAG, it's everywhere. It's not just a dirty towel, I was saying, that maybe you use to clean your floor. Retrieval, augmented generation. So why should enterprise customers use the RAG approach with their Gen AI applications? Yeah, so technically, I mean, if you're taking a query and you're first hitting the LLM directly, right, you're going to get data that was trained with generic data. But you want to, for enterprise customers, you want to ensure that your enterprise data is also a part of it. So that's where RAG comes into the picture. That's why it's retrieving and augmenting the prompt. So before the query actually goes directly to the LLM, we actually intercept it, hit the vector database that has content that's very specific to your enterprise, and then add it. And because it's at real time, you know, you don't need to do things like fine tuning, which is super expensive. So you can use this RAG just by storing it in your own database 
and then adding it at that time. So it's a very cost-effective approach as well to be used, and it's gaining a lot of popularity as we're doing that as well. So that's one of the areas where you can use RAG. All right, so strengthening the answers that you're getting, right? Making 100%. sure they're grounded. Grounding, that's yeah. the right word actually, because using it at runtime. time. So you should be doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, why are we here? <laughs> I just add tips and tricks here and there, folks. <laughs> okay, great. So, okay, so what would you say are key best practices that should be kept in mind or implemented when building these Gen AI apps? Yeah, so to keep things super simple, we recommend three steps to do this. First is sort of the data ingestion step where you're going to input your data, like user, user documents or policy documents, anything that your proprietary data is, and put those into our database using embeddings. Like that's the first step. Step number two is once the data is inside your system, now you're going to connect it with your applications, you're going to embed it with LLMs or embedding models, you're going to augment it with all the prompts, and then it allows your LLMs to be augmented with your data to provide the accurate real-time response that you want. That's the biggest difference between just a standard LLM and an enterprise LLM where you are grounding it with your data. And the third step is once the, you know, your app is comfortable with the RAG approach, you want to make sure that it's more accurate and improves over time. So you want to have like an evaluation system where you log all the results into something like BigQuery, and then you can find, you know, you can fine tune and improve the accuracy over time. But again, the three-step process: start simple, put your data in your database in LODB or Cloud SQL, run, run all the processes in Cloud Run or GKE, and then use Vertex A, of course, for the embedding models and the inferencing at the end. Nice, okay, I was going to say, let me throw you a curveball and ask how developers can seamlessly integrate the, uh, you know, into this and use it, but I think you just answered my that's question there. That's pretty much there. it, yeah. 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 Wonderful, See, we knew okay. the questions before, that's yeah. fine. <laughs> Shit. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. Really appreciate you taking the time and have a great rest of your next. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah.